Hey, how's it going? It is me, Noor. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today, I thought I would do a tag video because I haven't done one of these in a minute and it's a good time. Also, I saw that on YouTube. It had been like a year since I posted my first video in April. Um, so I'm feeling a little nostalgic. I saw Faye Reads, I think, talk about this on the Discord, the Bukati's, um Discord channel. And immediately when I saw this tag, I was like, oh, I have to do this. I love the 2000s and just the music, the fashion, time for divas. And that's me. Um, so I thought I would do this. This tag was created by lowercase Lena or lowercase Lena, I believe. I'm not sure how to pronounce their name. I'm so sorry. I will link their original video down below, but here's my bullet journal, questions written and ready. Let's get into it. Um, so the first prompt is Windows 98, a book that came out before you were born. So I was born in 1997 very tail end of 1997, I think a week left, um, and a lot of good books came out that year, I think. Good book, good year for books, yeah. But a book that I loved that came out before that, in 1982 to be exact, was Audre Lorde's Zami, A New Spelling of My Name. I think I read this book when I was getting back into reading early 2020. Um, or, you know, finally making time for reading and prioritizing reading. Um, yeah, early 2020, I would say. And I adored it. I thought that it was such a beautiful retelling of her life and her experience. So it basically follows her from childhood, going to schools, and sort of the struggle of being a black girl in a class of a lot of white people. Um, and then it talks about growing up, growing up poor, and life in New York coming to terms with her queerness and basically like traveling. It's just so beautifully told. Obviously Audre Lorde is a poet so the writing is just delicious but to me what really sticks with me is her talking about her experience as a young kid that can't really see super well and feeling like oh she can't read like she's stupid or that's what like people are telling her but really she like literally can't see um very much relate like looking at this right here no glasses on um but yeah i found that really interesting to read and also audrey lord's travels to uh, mexico and the relationship she had there and just how tumultuous that was but her being able to hold both like how traumatic that was and how um yeah, I think turbulent that was. A lot of T words, look at me go. Um, yeah, how that relationship was in terms of like the negative aspects of it with also, you know, the sheer amount of love that they had. I thought that was really interestingly written and you both got where she was coming from. You got the other person's perspective. Yeah, very different from Sister Outsider, which is the other book of hers that I've read. Obviously that's strictly nonfiction. This is like somewhere between memoir and Auto fiction, um, really enjoyed it. Beautiful, highly recommend. Next prompt is Wikipedia Rabbit Hole, a book that sparked a new interest slash hobby. Um, so I would say like the Royal Diaries series, and I think it was called, there was like a spin off called Dear America. Essentially, these are like diaries of young women and girls throughout history experiencing some sort of event and writing about it from their own perspective. Obviously it's a diary, duh, um, but I think that was really interesting for me because it really helped me think about history in a new way. It helped me understand that even though, you know, when we read or learn history in a classroom, we're taught it in like such overarching strokes, but there's so many people that lived whole complete lives during that time. like. For what is history to us was at some time contemporary to other people and reading these books really gave me that perspective and insight. Not necessarily like a Wikipedia rabbit hole because I had pretty limited computer time as a kid and I was pretty much only allowed to play typing games. Um, there was this one game where you type and this rock climber, mountain climber keeps climbing and then if you make a mistake he falls and dies 
what uh yeah so that was like pretty much what i would do on the computer so not a wikipedia rabbit hole but it made me read more historical fiction i guess at that time as like a second grader what have you um but yeah found those really fascinating and i think probably at some point laid the roots for my interest in history now i don't know am i just trying to pull something out of the hat maybe uh okay omegle a book that you were definitely too young to read and that potentially scarred you i think illustrated mum by jacqueline wilson i read at some point in elementary school and it was heavy all of jacqueline wilson's books are really heavy and like dark there's one called midnight which is also very weird and creepy um, and deals with like abuse between siblings and um, how trauma gets passed on from you know a sibling to the next that was really interesting um, illustrated mom though is the one that stays with me it's about these two girls that are dealing with um, their mom's mental illness and just how loving she can be when she's going through you know a good time where she's having like a manic episode and then how low she can crash through her depressive episodes i think that there's a scene where they find their mom sort of like passed out um that yeah it just stays with me like that image is still etched into my brain like the horror of being that young kid in that situation there are these two girls and like it's told from the younger daughter's perspective but I always think back to that scene and how the younger sister finally saw like the responsibility that fell on her older sister in that situation and to me that's like heartwarming um, or not heartwarming it makes me cry what's that word it makes me emotional um, yeah anytime like a character in any movie or any book feels some sort of like sympathy or has like an epiphany of what another person is going through whether that be like them apologizing or them just like seeing it it makes me fall like people recognizing other people's feelings immediately in tears um so that's one but also like there was this series alice something by phyllis reynolds taylor so it was like amazingly alice and like blah 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 that series and when i started reading the series i sort of i think i read them chronologically or more or less chronologically they started off like with those little cartoony covers but i remember in middle school reading um like early middle school just gotten out of fifth grade reading dangerously alice and like suddenly the cover looks different like it's a picture of this girl in a jean jacket it's just her torso i remember reading that and having like a pretty graphic like um like sex scene and i was like what is this what is going on um yeah i think that i was a bit too young for that i think and just learning about the ways that women who date men have to deal with men being weird yeah um that's that all right let's talk about girl games character that influenced your style i loved all these girl games i played like a hannah montana game where you could like design her outfit that was super fun there was a bratz game um so a lot of those probably influenced my style or how i want my style to be i guess um just like that customization aspect of it but okay two things there was the babysitters club series and this character Claudia she was like cool aggressively cool she had the front fringe of her hair dyed purple she always dressed super artsy and she did like screen printing and pottery and like ceramics and shit so obviously I was like I want to be her but also the Nancy Drew series um, by Carolyn Keene the original covers I think from the 30s or something like the vintage looking covers I love that illustration style and that like very tailored fashion. Um, I don't dress like that, but there's something about that style. I also had like a fashion book that I had taken from my grandmother um, with those sort of illustrations. So to me, that was like the ideal. But in that series, in the Nancy Drew series, there's this character, George, 
who is Nancy's friend and she always wears like pants and has like short curly hair something fruity was happening in those books I am sure of it but yeah just those series like hearing them talk and about clothes and like just the um sort of aura that they exuded where they could be like really feminine and you know picking out the different things to pack for this like two-day cruise or whatever very neat and then also like creeping around solving these mysteries getting into gritty situations like that whole aura really spoke to me george from the nancy drew series i saw you and i still remember you i don't remember the other friend's name who was she but george i see you comment section a book related hill that you're willing to die on this isn't a hill i'm willing to die on definitely a hot take maybe i don't know is it but i was actually going to post this on like instagram the other day and then i was like you know what keep that to myself let me go write about it in my journal but here i will talk about this because it is book related i think that the sort of literary fiction books that are set in Trump's era are overdone and redundant. I think that I find them really frustrating and annoying because there's such an obsession with this period in history because I, I, I do get it, like it was the most um, like outward show of Supreme, white supremacy and sort of America's values, but I, I find it so frustrating when people treat it like this is the era, the problematic era, when all of these problems had sort of been building up and one of my friends once said during that time that regarding the same idea that like Trump is a symptom, not the problem, and I think that oftentimes people treat him as the problem and talk about it as like this was the worst time in history when like yeah it was bad but things are terrible still and things were terrible before too um and so i find this sort of like iconization of him um and focus on him really reductive and a lot of times i it's the characters that are focusing on this era or the people that are writing about this era in my experience i feel like it's generally white people and it's the first time that they've or this is the impression i get again like with a grain of salt please um the impression i get is that people are so fixated on this era is because it's the first time that they have been forced to confront the reality of white supremacy in america and the reality of how racist and you know misogynistic the world is because oftentimes they were protected by their whiteness from seeing it and i think a lot of people other people already knew and were aware of it um yeah i mean there's more to the discussion because so much of his you know modus operandi is that what it is is like creating a persona creating a celebrity and creating a spectacle and i think that's an interesting conversation i'm definitely interested in that from you know an indian perspective looking at modi but yeah i find the setting in books to be very reductive because it doesn't actually engage with those ideas in a meaningful way i feel and that would that would be what was and that to me is like what's interesting about talking about that era specifically instead of just like being like this is the time when things were bad when things have always been bad um so that's my hot take uh yeah the next one is Delete History, a book that is a guilty pleasure. I don't think there's necessarily a book that I feel guilty about reading. Sometimes I do feel a little bit like unserious, which is stupid. Like that's even a stupid thing to think about. I'm a very unserious person anyway, um, but if my reading in a month skews more towards romance, I feel like it's not, there's not as much depth to it or it's not as, meaty in terms of yeah just like the content it's a lot of you know entertainment reads which is fine like that's you know a worthy pursuit to have fun but yeah i do feel sometimes like am i like not as cool or smart probably something to think about like 
why do I want to be perceived as intellectual or thinky or cool? I mean, of course, everyone wants to be cool, right? But um, yeah, why do I get down on myself for not reading literary fiction back to back to back? Who knows? My journal probably later tonight. So Sims, a bookish universe that you would like to escape to. I don't, um, yeah, I don't read a lot of fantasy or I don't like, read a lot of sci-fi where there's like specific worlds that I would want to escape to. So, oh, actually, Taylor Jenkins Reid, her sort of Hollywood universe, I would want to be a part of that. Like even if I was just like a costume designer or a writer or whatever, I would want to be a part of that Hollywood, like to see everything, to be in the middle of it. There's just like a glamour to that world and the way she writes, like her Hollywood specifically, like I'm well aware of the realities of Hollywood, but um, the way she specifically writes that world. Yeah, intriguing, I'd love to be, I would love to be Daisy Jones of the Six, Daisy Jones of the Seven and I'm the Seven. Um, yeah, that whole world, fun time. The next prompt is LimeWire, an author whose laptop you would like to hack into. I know I just talked a lot about, you know, being so aware of my romance tastes, and it's funny because I'm very loud about being the queen of Beth O'Leary Hive. Um, I love Beth O'Leary, and I would love to see what's on her little hard drive because I think with The Road Trip, which was the book, like her third book, I could see that there were instances where she wasn't strictly in the romance genre tropes and I felt like she was itching to write something different, at least that's the impression I got. I would love to see like what's on her computer, what are the things that she doesn't publish or don't fit into her persona of being a romance writer and yeah, just take a look at that. Also all of her books always have that extra layer of um, understanding and care and you know really looking at the people in our lives and extending empathy and I find that really beautiful I would love to know like what are her thoughts about things just what does she read what does she watch in her spare time I just want to know the next prompt is Fancast, a book that you would love to see turned into a movie. I talked a little bit about this I think at the beginning of the year in the superlatives video that I did. Um, so I mentioned Memorial by Brian Washington, love that book, would be beautiful as a movie, but also another romance, let me really just lean into talking about the romances now. I recently read Book Lovers by Emily Henry and I loved it. I think it had such a cinematic feel. It gave me like that Julia Roberts movie type of feel. I love Julia Roberts. She is everything to me. Julia Roberts in Notting Hill. Uh, when my friend showed me that movie, I lost my mind. There's a scene where she's wearing a suit and everything. Everything to me. It's so personal. Um, but yeah, so what was I saying? But yes, book lovers. Um, I think it has that feeling of like an early noughties like movie, rom-com. It's just very cinematic and very popular too. So like probably likely that we could see a movie and I will be there. I will be watching. It's beautiful. It's dramatic. Yeah, good time. I'll be there weeping in the theater. Okay, final prompt, internet friends, uh, tag people to do this tag. I'm gonna tag you specifically. If you're watching, you should do this if you're on the internet in any capacity. If you make videos, like let me know and I'll watch it. I'm so curious, very nosy. Um, if you're on Instagram and you do this like in a post, let me know, I'll go look at it. Alternatively, just answer a prompt or all of them if you liked in the comments below. You can also like, you can also subscribe. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye.